This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Welcome to a special program we have here. Uh, Caring is Tough. I'm Dan Marani, joined by a renowned psychiatrists throughout the San Diego area and throughout the Northeast in its entirety. Dr. David Reese, pleasure to have you here at MWF Studios tonight. A lot going on in the world I know that you feel is very important to broach right now. Yes, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, there surely is a lot going on and a lot of tragedy and a lot of people really hurting. And uh, I've been asked to say a few words just about dealing with pain and tragedy, whether it's personal, whether it's something we're seeing, and not only for the victims, but also for the first responders, whether they be professionals or just citizens who are the true heroes in this. And I'd really like to thank you and MWF Studios for donating the time. Certainly, you know, anything for you. Yeah. You're a longtime friend of ours. Thank you. And, you know, I was asked to talk about, you know, helping people who see themselves as tough and are tough uh, to get the, the help they need, to, to know what, how to take care of themselves. And when it came to dealing with tough people, I couldn't think of a better place to go to than MWF Studios. You got that right, brother. You nailed it down. You hit the nail on the head. And you've introduced me to some of the toughest people I've ever met. Without a doubt. So, um, yeah, this may be an unusual setting for talking about serious issues, uh, but I'm really thankful for the studio time and that we can do this, and hopefully it's useful. Unbelievable, Dr. Reese. We've seen recent tragedies, Houston, uh, Miami, all of Florida, Florida, and then we're just talking about the United States, Dr. Puerto Reese. Rico. Where do you perceive right now to be some of the, uh, the key spots right now where really that could use some additional help? Well, of course, Puerto Rico right now is in the midst of a tragedy, um, and we don't even know where that's going. Uh, we're not hearing that much about the Florida Keys or Houston because of Puerto Rico and everything else going on. Uh, but surely there's still a lot of suffering there. And even more than that, you know, what I want to talk about is the toll that it takes on people to experience the initial trauma, even if things sort of go well afterwards. Obviously in Puerto Rico, it's not going that well afterwards. But even if it's going well in Florida, in rebuilding, or in Houston, that doesn't stop what people have seen and what people have experienced over the past month. It doesn't go away, Dr. Reese, and while all of these people may be experiencing the same storm, it may be hitting their areas in the same way, folks, they're just prone to react very differently yeah. in each instance. Everybody reacts differently, and some of it is just temperament, who we are, who we were born. Some of it is based on our own past experiences and whether we've had trauma in our lives or not before. You know, I mean, a lot of times, especially first responders, will try to act as if they don't feel anything. And yeah, there's a small percentage who are what I call the James Bond types who really don't care, who really don't feel they care, or they wouldn't be doing the job, the people who don't care don't do those jobs, but who really don't feel, but that's a small percentage. And I know in my clinical practice, I see first responders of every type, whether you're talking about police, fire, volunteers, who may put on a act of not feeling immediately because they have to to perform or even for years afterwards but it slowly takes a toll and it's just important for those people to know that there's assistance out there and it is tough caring and the tough need help at times in these instances whether it be first responders victims that are living in these areas do you think it's better for them to confront the uh, the thoughts and emotions that maybe go on in the moment or maybe put the, uh, the genie in the bottle, so to speak. Hold on to it uh, until maybe there's a more calmer time in their lives to try and reflect and deal with it. That's an excellent question. You know, in, in a perfect world, which I haven't found, I don't think you have. You got that right. Uh, yeah, the sooner you deal with things, the better. Uh, but obviously that's not always possible, especially if you're in the midst of some type of national disaster, natural disaster. Uh, so, or if you're a first responder, at times you have to put it aside. Uh, because if you start dealing it, 
with it, it's hard to concentrate, it's hard to focus. And even if you're a victim, at times you have to focus on just surviving. And in fact, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, which is the difference between depression and sadness on one hand, which is absolutely normal to be sad, it's normal to grieve. Depression is where it gets to a point of despair or where it's really interrupting your functioning. And then PTSD. Uh, and just very briefly, you know, when, let, let's use a, uh, not a natural disaster, let's use a situation of someone being attacked. Uh, you know, if you're being attacked, you don't want to start thinking about processing the situation. You don't want to start thinking about your emotions. Sure. You want to protect your ass. Right. You want to flee or fight, do what you need to get out of there. And even once you're safe, you need to look at what happened and what do you do next. And the body, the mind, is basically prune, pruned to do that and prepared to do that. We go into what's called a fight or flight response. And if you look at it, you can't really process emotions at that time. You have the sensation of time slowing down. And even physically, the immune system tends to slow down. Uh, because what's more important, to fight the guy coming at you with a knife or to take care of having the sniffles? Right. So our bodies, our minds do shut down, but the important thing is not to let it stay there. Because if it stays shut down, it never gets processed. And uh, yeah, if I give you just one quick sure, example no, of that. For instance, if I asked you what did you have for dinner last night, you know, you probably can tell me. Right. But you wouldn't feel as if you're eating it right now. You wouldn't smell exactly. it right now. If I asked you what did you have for dinner three weeks ago Wednesday, you'd probably have no, no idea. Right because it's not that important. And that's how memory processes. And if we use a computer analogy, you know, what's immediate, like last night's dinner, isn't a file we can access. But I would have to ask you, well, what did that steak taste like for you to really bring it back? Otherwise, you'd just give me the information. And the information from three weeks ago wouldn't really be relevant. Well, when it's not relevant, it sort of gets shoved aside to a storage, and you could still call on it, you know, if you had to look at a calendar, you might be able to reconstruct it, but it's not immediately there. But when you don't, when you don't process traumatic experiences, what happens is it never gets put into the right files. It always stays in immediate memory. So it would be as if, as soon as I said dinner, not just that you remembered having chicken, but you could taste it, you can smell it, except it would be a horrible experience because it would be traumatic. And that's basically PTSD the information never got put in the right files, so to speak, in the brain, but stays there like a ghost that comes right back to you, not as a memory, but as a re-experience. When that's happening, you know you're having issues. Now, for that to happen for a week or two is normal, but if it's happening beyond that, it's something that needs some attention. How important do you think it is to have that defense mechanism built inside of you it's very important because you need to be able to defend yourself. You don't want to freeze in a situation that requires your attention, that requires you to act. So being able to shut things down is both natural and important uh, and protective. Uh, but sometimes we have to learn how to unshut it. Basically how to take our systems from red alert down to orange to yellow and then back to normal. Uh, otherwise, each time that re-experience comes up, we go back to red alert and it starts the whole thing over again. And that's where you get the chronic sleeplessness that can go into depression and lead to all sorts of problems. Now, it is a good thing to have that defense system built up inside yourself. But at what point do you think someone should realize, maybe this is a little bit more than I can handle. Maybe I should reach out to someone to try and get some assistance in dealing right. with this. Uh, basically, it's a level of disruption. Uh, if you're not sleeping consistently, you know, more than a few days, if you're having frequent nightmares, if you can't eat, if you can't concentrate. Of course, if you're starting to feel depressed or hopeless and or if you should feel anything self-destructive or loss of impulse control, you need help. And the other thing is if you find yourself finding bad ways to cope with it, whether it's turning to drugs or alcohol or just being letting it out at your family or friends, if it's disruptive to your life, and get some help for it. If you find it's basically taking its own course and you're getting better and you're functioning, you may not need professional help. But if it's disruptive to your physical health, to your functioning, or leading you into a path of dangerous behaviors, get some help, whether you're the victim, whether you've just seen it on TV, 
or whether you're a first responder. Give you one quick example. I was called down to Newton the week of the tragedy down there, and I was only there one day. I was uh, volunteering with some of the local therapists. Mm -hmm. It took me two months to get back to myself, just wow. from being there from one day. One day. And not even seeing, I actually worked with some of the families whose children <coughs> lost friends, and just for one day. But just seeing that town in shock, I have to say that my sleep, my appetite, my concentration, it was okay, but it was not right for two months. Wow. And if it had gone on any longer, if it wasn't consistently improving, I would have gone and gotten some help. Really? Well, that coming from the doctor himself. Well, that leads into my next question, doctor. Uh, why do you think there are some people uh, that try and go about the quote-unquote tough guy route, and when they, you know, I'm sure pretty certain they probably could use a helping hand, to get them out of that spot. Why do you think they try to avoid reaching out for some assistance? You know, some people it's fear. Some people are afraid to really face it. Uh, and then a lot of it, we've just been trained that way. You know, and our society doesn't always encourage getting help. You know, and uh, we're trained to be tough. And more and more we're, we're getting past that, but far from perfectly. Uh, but, I mean, you know as well as I do that the people we work with in this area, you know, they're some of the toughest people. Like I say, I mean, I have people coming in who are on disability for three years for things that you guys wouldn't take a two count for. Exactly. But on the other hand, I've seen some of those same guys and women in tears. I've seen them when they're hurting. I've seen them when they're depressed. And if they don't get help, as tough as they are on the outside, on the inside, we're all human and it takes its toll. What would you do? Why would you encourage someone that may be on that cusp um, of maybe, again, needing a helping hand to get through a, a rough patch, or maybe even bigger than just a patch, but to take that leap of faith yeah. and to try and get some help. How would you encourage a quote-unquote tough guy, or in this day and age, we'll even throw it out there, a tough lady? Uh, you know, the first thing is just talk to peers. You know, I'm not saying you should run to a psychiatrist first thing. Obviously, if you're using drugs or suicidal or something, that's one thing. But talk to peers, talk to friends, uh, even just read The Rock's book, read uh, the books of some of the celebrities who The Rock's through. book. Now, why would you suggest The Rock's book? Because he's open about his depression. Bruce Springsteen's open about his depression. Really? Yep. I mm -hmm. read The Rock's book when it came out back in 2000, yeah. but I really don't remember him covering that. He, he's talked about it pretty openly. Uh, Springsteen's autobiography talks about it. A lot of people now are opening up about their battles with depression, with PTSD. Read that and realize that caring is tough and if you're suffering with it, get some help. It is tough, but Dr. Reese, when you have wonderful people like you involved in the process, it can make it a much easier ride if you can just take that step and try and reach out to folks. I know, Dr. Reese, this is a very interesting topic, lots of interesting topics we can discuss in a forum like this. If folks want to get a hold of you, some of your other readings and research you've done, what's the best way? Uh, DMR Dynamics is one word, is both my website and my Twitter. Uh, or you can email me at dmreiss at gmail.com. I do respond to that, and I welcome people calling, emailing. It's never a charge. I'm not looking for business. It's all volunteer. That's why you're such a good man. That's why I want you here as often as possible to talk to folks both near and far. Dr. Reese, any final message for folks before we go? Uh, if you're suffering, look for some comfort, and don't be afraid to admit it. And I'd like to thank you again for donating the studio and your time for we, this effort. We thank you for providing this information to folks because it can do a lot of good. Thank you, Dr. David Reese, for joining us here. Caring is tough, but it's not unbeatable. Good thank way to you. put it? Very good way to put it. We look forward to inviting you back for more informative sessions like this here at MWF Studios. Until we speak again, you and yours, be well.